Praise Jesus, everyone. Good evening to everyone. Praise God. Now it's time to celebrate with the testimonies to give glory and praises to the Lord. Praise God. Those who have the testimonies, please unmute and speak. Nobody has testimonies today? I'll only share, sister. <laughs> I, I will always be having because I'm always experiencing something <laughs> other else. Praise God. <laughs> it, you can say it was last week or before that week. Uh, actually, I first had got cold in the house. Cold cough I had got. And then with the word of God, I did not go to the doctor. With the word of God only, I threw it out. I threw the evil one out. And then soon after, next week, my husband and my elder daughter, they both also, my husband had running nose and he had a cold. And my daughter, she got sneezing, continued sneezing. So I told my husband, Are, your nose is running so much and you have to go to work also. You go to the doctor. So he tells me, no, you did not go to the doctor. Then why should I go to the doctor? I will also not go to the doctor. With the word of God only, I'm going to kill it. And so he's, he's also within two weeks, he, uh, two weeks, no, within two days, he also got a relief. My daughter also, within one day only, my daughter is it went. And mine, I think it took me three days to go. So we drove off the evil one with the word of God. So thank you, Lord Jesus, that... You are always there with us and it is your help with which we are always, you know, killing that evil one, not allowing him to be in our house because the Lord, our God, is our savior and this house is his house. And the second testimony, I just want to share, uh, say thanks to the Lord, all glory to God the Father because my younger daughter, has had appeared for a SSC exam and she has passed with 86.80 percent, almost 87 percent. So thank you, Lord Jesus, for always being there with us, with our family, and for all the blessings and favor on my family. Thank you very much. Praise God, sister. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful testimony on uh, getting recovered from cold because. Uh, you know, my, even my daughter had cold and she was sneezing. She had sinusitis, uh, you know, and uh, she had a slight fever also. She was coughing. You, must be, you people must have heard while she was sneezing and not during the tongue session. She used to sit there. And what happened is the uh, day before yesterday, that was on Thursday, uh, she had temperature. But, uh, uh, you know, I told her... Uh, because, you know, see, God did not tell us to take, uh, not to take the medicine. But I just told her at the middle of the night, I think around 3.30, I told her, see, Baba, if you want to take Panadol, you can take the Panadol and say a small prayer plus the water. She didn't like it. She said, I will not take. She didn't take at all. But the next day morning, she woke up and she went for her service and she was all good. And um, she was very upset of my telling that, why did I tell her to take the Panadol if I'm in Christ? Okay, <laughs> please. <laughs> Please God. <laughs> she, she thought that, you know, I'm not in Christ if I'm talking like that. It's not that God did not tell us. God has given us the doctors. God has given us the medicine. Yeah. I don't encourage anybody to, you know, only to, I don't encourage in both the ways, like, you know, go to the doctor, do this, do this. I never tell people for, because for myself, I don't go. Uh, see, for myself, I know where I can uh, uh, how I can get rid of it, right? Just with the work. So when it comes to the children also, I don't rush to the hospital, but for if they should not feel that, you know, I'm suffering and my mother is not even bothered, correct? Yeah, right, so right. Level of each one is different. But uh, yes, faith does work. And uh, she was in faith and she, uh, she, she recovered next day. And she told me in the morning, in case I am, not feeling well, I will wake you up, you will drop me to the place uh, and otherwise I will go walking. But by the time I, I was awake, but she got up and she went by walking because it's a short distance. In place to God. This is one of <laughs> the, you know, when we, uh, when Sister Leonie said that her husband said that uh, you did not take the medicine, why should I 
so they are each one knows you know their faith level so we encourage people to remain in the word and word works and i especially tell people please remain in the word do not give up and my teachings are only to remain in the word i don't encourage people with medicine and i don't even say that medicines uh, are not meant to uh, recover but it is we i teach people to be god dependent mm. and uh, that is what is called faith praise jesus praise god for me i have a testimony i'll just uh, read it out it just happened two days back it, i received it on when uh, thursday thursday okay thursday when i was at work this child of god uh, sends a message to me good afternoon sister praise the lord and juan fernandez finally a become student my final exams are going on sister and five subjects i wrote well and tomorrow is my last exam during my fourth exam while studying i started getting thoughts about my past or negativity and increased amount of fear that is anxiety i don't know what to do sister please pray for me that all these thoughts and the uh, thoughts gets eliminated and i study well and excel in my tomorrow's exam i pray for distinction in my final semester thank you sister so i was at work so and she sent me a message saying can i call you uh, give a call to you so i told her baba i'm at work i cannot speak to you when i'm at, at home i can talk to you and so then uh, i didn't know was this this person just messaged me from nowhere and i asked her who gave you my number so she said my sister in india in mangalore and uh, then she said i'm the same girl you all remembered i had shared her testimony where a uh, doctor said 48 hours and she came the yes. before I was out of the ICU, correct? Yes. So she uh, contacted my sister. I think her mother contacted uh, my sister for this, and uh, my sister gave the number, and she contacted me. In the evening on Thursday, when I came home, I just shared with her few, uh, uh, you know, the on the uh, I shared the word the uh, what the Bible says about anxiety, and um, I told her the this fear does not come to you. from god and uh, god has not given you the spirit of uh, fear but the power of uh, uh, but he has given the spirit of power of love and sound mind and then i explained to her uh, this anxiety can be uprooted now and i prayed with her and then i told her gave her a small prayer to prepare for her for her exams and um, uh, listen to me carefully i did not do anything much with her and uh, i gave her a small prayer plus i gave her uh, john 14 26 i told her this you speak in the examination all whenever you read the question and before going to bed uh, you read psalm 23 and when you wake up in the morning before you step out of the bed you say lord's prayer which he has given to us 10 times you all understanding what i'm saying correct so uh, when uh, i told her do this and as a small prayer and i said today you go to sleep in peace now i don't want you to worry about anything tomorrow's exam nothing even if you are not prepared enough just don't worry because the wisdom of god is working in you and you are going to write your exam and you are going to excel whatever you want to get the distinctions you will get the distinction i told her and yesterday i was uh, in my prayer time uh, when i was with the lord of that is the time she sent me a message saying praise the lord sister my exam went very well uh, maybe one or two mistakes that's all all by god's grace hallelujah and i received i, I recited all the praise you had sent and i have neither negative thoughts nor anxiety anymore praise jesus now this all happened within 24 hours now who is working in our life is the lord god the father god father heard one son's problem coming to another son son spoke father did the job and this girl she was uh, she is aiming at a distinction and and i told her that she will definitely get the distinction and she was focused after that and uh, she she said that she did everything and uh, i know that it's such a small testimony we learned so many things because this is how she operated in faith then i of course you know i don't leave the person just like that so i gave her the sower and the seed 
uh, CD. Now she finished her exams, so she has to sit and listen that 11 hour CD. She let her listen at least every day, 30 minutes, one hour. I told her go slow and uh, she said she will do it, praise God. Praise God. This is, this is one of her testimony uh, of a child of God. Now I'll give you my testimony. Um, my, you know, on 22nd May, we celebrated our wedding anniversary. And on that day, one of our friends from who was staying in our building in Kuwait, who moved to another building in Kuwait. And uh, now they are retired, actually, the husband and wife. So, so they went to India for the, some treatment of his uh, wife's spine. And uh, every year he calls us on our wedding anniversary. Not a single year he has failed to call us. And th that day also he called us and he called us from his Indian number because I have his both numbers. And uh, he wished us and everything. And then he said that we are in India for treatment, so and so thing. And uh, my husband was here for a wedding anniversary. And after that, on the same Friday, he left last week. And then when he went, to, uh, when he was, when he came to know that my husband is in India, so he, uh, he told my uh, husband a uh, uh, Passover because we are, we are uh, in Andheri, they are staying in Ka. Barivli, I see colony. So he said, "Come, uh, we have been to the place. So he said, uh, you know, just uh, pass by and I will, uh, we can catch up. So uh, my husband went there and my husband was talking to them and sharing the word and he was telling how the word of God works, miracles and, uh, uh, you know, they can get connected to me. Uh, Clara will teach them out there. And then uh, he connected, I was at work and they had a video call and all. And when he was leaving, I think, or before that, my husband just told them, you know, we want her uh, lamp for our dining table in Goa, which is an adjustable lamp from the ceiling. And we have been looking for this lamp for so long online, uh, in the uh, market, everywhere. And uh, in Bombay, we couldn't get. Here in Kuwait, we couldn't get. And online, my husband couldn't get, but we wanted that lamp because we had seen the same lamp in their house when they were in Kuwait here. And it's an amazing lamp. It is adjustable to the height, to the lowest, to the top. So uh, my husband said, we are looking for a lamp which you had in your old house when you were staying in our building. So my husband told me, he just went inside and he brought a brand new unpacked lamp and gave him. And he said, this one is for you. My husband didn't understand what is it. So he said, in Hindi, Abhi tune pucha na, just now you asked, no? Ye phir hi so my husband opened, it was the lamp that we were looking for. It's a brand new. He had one with him in Bombay. Now, now, is it not the father knows our desire? Is it not that father wants us to be happy? Now, yeah. we didn't need this lamp anywhere. We, it is our desire. And I was keeping on telling my husband, Joseph, that lamp is an ideal one for the dining table, which we can adjust. And is uh, this man just goes, pay, takes that brand new piece and gives it to my husband. And my husband calls me and saying, do you know I have some good news? I got something else. He said, no, good news. You have a testimony for next Saturday. He said, this is the lamp you were looking and you know, I got a brand new piece. Praise God. How wonderful a father is. <laughs> Very nice. Praise God. Praise. <laughs> a father God is so loving, so loving. He knows yeah. each one of our uh, heartfelt desires. Sometimes we don't even pray for it, isn't it? Yeah, right. Did we, I did not even any use any scripture here. I didn't make a prayer. But I said I want it. He also, my husband also likes like that, uh, you know, lamp when he saw that. He said, yes, yeah, that's the right one we wanted. But see, our heart connects, our spirit connects. We are one soul, one, one spirit, one soul, one body. Isn't it? Yeah, right. Praise we God. are in covenant with the Lord God and Jesus is the covenant partner of praise God. So wonderful it is to be one. Thank praise you, Jesus. God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so anybody? No celebration yeah. today? But I have a sort of testimony. Praise God, sister. Uh, yeah. In the, in the last week or prior to that, uh, I had shared my testimony how my son's PF, I have uh, uh, managed to get it correct, uh, correct, managed to do successfully by grace of God. It is the Lord who has done it. 
but after that it was after successfully transferred i uh, claim uh, for withdrawal now so now in the pf when the person is uh, working and employee is working he cannot withdraw the full amount but they have to apply for advance so advance is like uh, not full advance so we applied like you know uh, 65000 something we applied so that we will get only half so we applied it and uh, the one who applied to help us in uh, help, helping out like you know he said he'll get 30 to that uh, 50 i mean you will get 50% of that so we applied for that and uh, if you go to see we have got uh, out of 65 i got 55 amount of credit in the account you know in my son's account i mean it was like uh, more than uh, 50% like more than that like what we expected i really give glory and thanks to places and every time when i get an opportunity i will share this testimony any platform because i know what have gone through with this and how my lord has helped me in this uh, situation like i really thank and praise god for this and another yeah another thing is one small testimony i was uh, hesitating but it's a small testimony by tisha but still i will share um in uh, nowadays i mean in the some about uh, some 20 days ago like you know i i come from work and from station to my house i come walking so i buy some vegetables milk and all like you no know? so that day i went to uh, d mart and i brought a milk packet a 1 liter amul milk packet and i normally keep in the fridge so i that day i forgot and like um, uh, like you know i forgot and i normally keep my bag on the bed and i go inside i have a wash you know now this milk packet was on the bed and i forgot to check also after 5 hours i'm searching for the milk packet the milk packet is not to be seen suddenly i realize sorry let me che- check on the in the bag so the ba- in the bag it was there 5 hours it was outside only normally if i remove the milk from the fridge and i keep out for half an hour it gets spoiled and i now what to do i said now i just made a prayer i said lord in the name of jesus this milk is perfect and nothing is wrong everything is perfect and good and it is normal like and you know, i made it that fit i kept uh, on the gas to make hot everything nothing no nothing is everything was perfect it came it was boiling as normal like you know so i really want to thank god for uh, thank for the small thing what he is doing wonders in my life is got beautiful testimony sister because um, everything for the glory of god milk could have not spoil because you had good thoughts is <laughs> god <laughs> even if that milk wanted to get spoiled it wouldn't spoil because <laughs> the thoughts would you know that it's the th- it's our thoughts reign over anything praise god and i bought the money Money? Did you get the money immediately, or you had to wait for it? You had to wait, right? Oh yeah, I had to wait. Yeah. Because there is patience in everything. It yes. is not we plant the seed today. Tomorrow we will see the plant, and uh, after two days we see the mangoes on the tree, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That is the process. So the harvest comes when you have patience. Before the harvest, there is rain, there is storm, there is thundering, lightning. Everything is there. So mm-hmm. after that only we see the results. Praise God. Wonderful. Praise God. Anyone else? Yes, sister. Oh, sister Sharada, sister Sharada. Yeah. Praise God, sister. Thank you, Praise Jesus. Praise God. Yeah, <laughs> I'm back from a discipleship retreat, sister. Uh, I participated only for five days, uh, but before going, also, uh, I had to face many problems, but uh, only. through holy spirit's guidance i could overcome actually going to goa this is for the first time i don't even know uh, how to go what to do there where to get the uh, conveyance nothing i knew and uh, at home uh, my brother was worried and from the time i made up my mind to go and participate in this retreat my brother always had negative words in this age is it necessary for you to go because you are 57 you are a diabetic you don't keep well if your sugar goes down so so many negative words sister so i was also a little bit reluctant and i was not able to make up my mind but finally i thought if god is there i can overcome all uh, difficulties i thought 
and I made him even the uh, previous night uh, also he had a very negative word saying that you are taking these young boys if police catches you there if something if he's not having license without license that boy is going to take you you are very adamant you never listen to us so many things he said sister i did not retaliate i didn't answer back i just said a word of prayer god you are there to lead me and i came up from to my uh, floor uh, because they, my brother stays in ground floor and i stay in second floor next day morning my nephew came uh, the flight was at one o'clock and uh, we were supposed to go uh, leave by eight o'clock eight a.m in the morning but that boy was waiting for his friend and he came around 9 30. so that is the time again my brother said you people are going very late if something happens on the way if you miss the uh, flight uh, you have to come back all these things he was saying but i just gave a deaf ear for that and uh, i got into the car sister and when we went there uh, we reached around the 12 o'clock and 11 30 counter was closed and i went inside and i was requesting those people there just uh, i thought it is one o'clock the flight and i came now it's just 12 o'clock Ma'am, you have to come uh, by 11.30, 11.30 count is closed. You came half an hour late. Then what is my, what is the next move? I don't know. Then I went, okay, can I cancel my ticket and will you refund the money? They said, no, if you have to cancel the ticket, you have to do before, three hours before. But now we, we are helpless. Then uh, I said, when is the next flight? Uh, the, it was nine o'clock my my scheduled flight, but the next flight is at uh, uh, quarter past four. So um, I again asked uh, how much is the ticket. They said eight thousand. So that previous ticket was five thousand. Now this is eight thousand. Five thousand they are not going to refund. Now again I have to spend eight thousand. So I was in a fix whether to go back or go forward or what to do. Then I called my nephew and I shouted at him. He was outside uh, uh, this thing and I was uh, I was inside. He was outside the airport in the parking lot and uh, I shouted at him saying that I you were supposed to come at eight o'clock. Now it is 9.30. Then he was saying, uh, okay, you come outside then tomorrow again, we will take a date, we'll book flight and you can go tomorrow. All the way I came till airport. It is two and a half hours journey from my place to the airport. Then I just said a word of prayers and uh, I spent 8,000 there again. That means only for going, I spent 13,000 rupees. So I went there and uh, from airport, I took an airport taxi and went to the retreat center. And that night I was very sick because of the uh, traveling. And from next day onwards, I participated in all the sessions. Really, it was uh, spirit led and uh, uh, very much uh, like um, I know, I came to know the divine truth, the truth uh, hidden uh, in the scriptures. All these days I used to think just we have to read the word of God and uh, uh, just going to the church and taking Holy Communion and uh, uh, doing all sort of confessions and everything is that is perfect. I'm leading a spiritual life. But one when I went there, I felt that it is it is not the life that I am supposed to lead. Spiritual life is something more. We have to, we shouldn't de depend on our flesh, but we have to depend on the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So sometimes I used to feel very uh, sad when people deject me and they don't acknowledge me, they they reject me and these all these sort of things I used to have inner wounds. But uh, there one of the preachers, she said that, how she was uh, uh, changed from the person, like uh, the from the person of flesh to person of uh, spirit. So when uh, she was uh, dejected, insulted, humiliated earlier, she used to feel very offended and very depressed. But later on, when she gave her life to to God, uh, and the Holy Spirit just started convicting her and changing her personality then when she was talking to me i felt that holy spirit is really giving this guidance this message and that uh, the girl her name is sister priscilla when she is uh, talking uh 
I could feel that her words are pricking my heart and my soul. I just couldn't stop crying, sister. All through her sessions, I was just weeping, see, sobbing and crying a lot. I felt that Lord, all these days, I was only uh, thinking of flesh, but I have to crucify my flesh in order to grow in spirit. So that was there and uh, uh, then slowly, slowly, I was going deeper into this uh, scripture, uh, understanding of scripture system. But in the meantime, I came to know that uh, uh, my HOD, through my HOD, that my exams are going to start. I have to do my pre-finals and internals. Uh, so 28th, I booked my ticket. I was supposed to stay till 5th of uh, June. But 28th, I booked a bus ticket and I came, sister. So when I came also, I took a cab from the uh, center and I asked that person, you have to drop me in so-and-so bus station. But that person dropped me in a wrong bus station and I was not able to locate where my bus comes. So I was just going here and there and I was asking people, where is this particular bus station? I, I booked a sleeper uh, uh, bus and this is a SVR bus and where it stops. But none of them were guiding me, sister. Everybody said that we don't know. Then I just uh, stood for a while and I just prayed to Holy Spirit guide me because I am now I'm lost here. I don't know when I'm speaking in English, they don't understand. When I speak in Hindi, they don't understand. They are saying in a different language, which I don't understand. So what to do? Then I just uh, asked one of the uh, lady who was going that side and I uh, see I have to go to Hyderabad. Which, where will I get the bus? Then she said, you have come to a wrong bus station. This is a local bus where within Goa only this uh, KDC bus, some KTC bus, they said, uh, this is not the correct bus station. You have to go a little bit further. Then I was asking if I have to cross the road. Then she said, just you go this side and you will find a small way going that into an open ground and maybe there you will find your bus. Then when I went all the way dragging my, all my trolley and going there, sister, I could see like a, a small uh, passage where there are stones and uh, it was, I, I cannot step and I cannot uh, cross that side. So it was like a, like a bridge, broken bridge. And I cannot balance. That is a very narrow gate, narrow bridge. And with all my suitcase, I cannot dragging the, my trolley. I cannot uh, cross it. So I was just uh, 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 sitting, uh, standing there. And again, I said a word of prayers. Then uh, one couple was going and one lady turned back and saw me and she uh, did a sign to her husband and she showed me, she, I think she's a Govan. She showed me that I, I stay, I waited there with them, with my luggage. So that person actually went little far and he came back and he asked me if I want to go the other side. I said, yes. And uh, I don't know, I cannot uh, take this trolley and go. Then he took the luggage sister and he, Park, he put my luggage the other side and I walked there and I was asking everywhere where is Hyderabad bus then one person told that uh, that uh, that bus already left then again I don't know how I will go back now if the, uh, if the bus goes what am I supposed to do then in the meantime one uh, Delhi boy he said uh, uh, you are staying where this uh, North Indian buses, but that is a South Indian bus. This is not the area where the, you have to wait for the bus. You have to go further. Then again, I went further and uh, I, I met one boy and I asked that boy if he knows Telugu. Then he said, yes, I know Telugu. Then uh, where is the bus? I'm supposed to go to so-and-so bus. He said, it is, it will come in uh, another 15, 20 minutes. You wait here, he said. Then I got into the bus system. Finally, I got uh, the bus and I went inside. And that my bus was in a, a lower uh, sleeper uh, behind the driver. And when I went inside, uh, there were curtains. Everybody put curtains and they were sleeping in the sleeper coach. So I also put curtain and I, I was lying down. Uh, then, uh, then only I felt that I had this claustrophobia. I never knew that I am scared of closed spaces. 
So I have uh, uh, traveled many times in, in aeroplane, but uh, uh, plane journey did not uh, make me sick. But this bus journey, when the bus was uh, turning, I was getting severe vomiting sensation and I started sweating. I were, my sugar was low, going down, uh, and I had a very funny feeling. Then I was just uh, praying in tongues. Then that is the time I started praying in tongues. And... Um, uh, when uh, in, in certain place bus stopped and they said that uh, they are go they are checking liquor so i came down and i could feel that i am i am losing balance i was not able to stand in one place i was getting staggered like a drunkard there and i went there and i told to that one person there bhaiya i cannot pull my pull my uh, luggage and open i feel dizzy i have to go back i said and i went back sister around 11 o'clock again the bus stopped for dinner and that is the time i got down and still i didn't want to eat anything and one person was standing there sister i went there and i asked him do you know telugu that person said i know telugu then i told him i feel dizzy and i have vomiting sensation can i get fennel seed somewhere here then he said there is a restaurant there in the ball fennel seeds are kept then i went and took fennel seed sister i i came and i slept again then there was a breakdown of that bus sister again we have to get down and change the to another bus so once i was uh, going there uh, i met the same person who was standing there when i asked for fennel seeds so i told him uh, see this luggage i cannot pull can you help me so this person helped me to transfer my luggage to another bus sister then uh, again from there again we have to go to third bus sister this particular bus is not allowed into the city limits so that is the time i asked this person the person who helped me in uh, in carrying the luggage i asked this person see again that small bus i cannot uh, travel i still feel weak then uh, in the conversation i asked him uh, where do you stay he said i stay in particular place i told him i am also going to that particular place then after some time i asked him why did you come to goa he said i came to goa for sightseeing and uh, i told why are you coming back you said you went with your friends why are you coming back he said my money finished then in the meantime i came to know that this person stays 10 kilometers away from my place in the conversation i came to know that means in the same same area we stay but i don't know that person that person don't doesn't know me but it is the holy spirit that has sent that person to me to help me all through my journey sister so the gift of uh, tongues will not go in vain sister while i was praying in tongues so many miracles that took place and people have come forward to help me sister this is the holy spirit's guidance and uh, when i came to know that person is just staying just ne in the next street where i stay sister that i told him see once once we get down there my nephew is coming with my uh, car and uh, i will drop you in your place so it came in my car sister then i told him you are thinking that you came back because you 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 finish your money there but actually i feel that holy spirit has guided you to to help me then immediately that person who is a hindu also said that this is all because of god's grace so i was surprised to 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 uh, hear the word that grace from his mouth sister then i really couldn't stop thanking and praising god so that was the beautiful testimony how we depend on holy spirit even though we are lost in unknown place even though we don't know the language always god is there to help us because his word says i will never leave you nor forsake you and his mercies are new every morning only thing is we have to depend on him and uh, when we depend on him and when we crucify our flesh and we start living for him and in him and when we think that we are not we are living in this world but not of this world when he, when we have this thought and we follow him with all our crosses uh, definitely god will guide us uh, for a greater level sister 
I thank and praise you, praise God and Holy Spirit for leading and guiding me and for allowing me to reach safely home. And this is my testimony, sister. I thank and praise God for all his wonderful things that he has been doing from the time of conception until dated. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise God. Wonderful testimony from your journey to Goa back. And uh, uh, you all heard, she said she's 57, but she's still a student in the in this world and also in the spiritual world. Praise God. She's still learning and she's still, she's going to give some exams, she said. And the man who yes. was, uh, the man who, who was uh, helping you, his money was uh, over. Yes, his money was over, but his money was over for a purpose in your life. Yes, sister. Yes, sir. even I also told the same to him. Okay. Yeah, God, God sent a person in your life to help you. And uh, if you're talking about the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues, yes, sister. remember everyone, everyone remember speaking in tongues. After speaking in tongues, you may see the storm, but don't be afraid. Many people uh, experience it. Uh, they have just finished speaking in tongues and they see something is happening around them. Everything yes, is fine. But it is nothing. You have to be still. You have to be at peace. Everything is coming to pass at that time. Just keep saying this, this word. Everything is good. God is in control. God is doing something great now. Because you are not depending on your flesh. It is the spirit. Because God is spirit. You have prayed in spirit. Correct. So yes. when you when your spirit is one with God and when you are spoken in tongues, that storm also will be taken care by the Lord God, us, mighty God, praise God, wonderful and a very good testimony. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. God. Now it's time for us uh, to start the Bible class. Just give me one minute. Praise God. Anybody want to do the opening prayer? I'll say. Nobody? I'll say, I'll say, sister. Sure, sure. In the name of Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you. I praise you, Abba Father, for this time that we are all here in your presence. Holy Spirit, I thank you. I praise you. For each and every word that will be spoken today by sister are your words. And yes, Holy Spirit, you will be giving us the proper understanding of each and every word that is going to be spoken today. Thank you, Jesus, for you are always there with us to help us in each and every moment of our life. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I praise you that... All our brothers and sisters who are gathered here today to listen to your word are covered with your holy and precious blood. And we all will be listening and will be applying each and everything, your word that we listen and share it with many others so that they too may come up in life. They too may experience your love. Yes, Lord Jesus for whatever we have, we need to share it with each and every one that we meet. I make this prayer in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Amen and amen. Praise God. Thank you, sister. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, uh, many of us uh, say that I am saying this prayer, I'm saying this, I am doing this, but I don't see the results. Now, do we have to build a solid foundation in our spiritual life? Is it yes. important? Yes, is it yes. important, right? Very important. So, very important to have a solid foundation. At times, we have uh, we share the promises with people, but then still they come back because they don't have the raw faith. The raw faith is something that you... Uh, for example, this girl who I spoke on Thursday, she, she's she's very raw. Now, for her, this life, what I'm teaching her, is different. She's she is born in a Roman Catholic. She is going to the church. She's doing everything. She has the relationship with Jesus, 
just the way you and I had in the past becoming before we were born again. But now when I share the word of God, she is immediately believing in it and she's doing it and she found she got the result. She was set free within 24 hours. So we need to have that uh, raw faith every day. We should not be saying that, I know this, I know this, I know this. You know everything. But what happens when the situation comes to you? Do you have that raw faith or stale faith? Mm. Correct? Yes. Now, now, I'm going to take up these scriptures from Matthew chapter 7. Sister, take us to Matthew chapter 7. This is house built on the raw faith. And only I'm, seven, only seven, sister. No, Matthew chapter seven, go there directly. Then we will take from 24 to 29. Twenty-four, you said. Yeah, twenty-four to twenty-nine. Yeah. Read. Sister Gracie, there? Yeah, yeah, one second. From where I have to say? 24. 24. 20, 24? To 29. Okay, okay. Therefore, whoever hears this saying of mine and does them, I will like him to, uh, to a, wise man, a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew beat on the house on that house and it, and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock but everyone who hears the saying of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house and it fell and great was his fall so it was when jesus had ended the saying that the people were astonished at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Praise Jesus. Now, Jesus says that anyone who listens to his teachings or his whatever is telling them and follows it is a wise man. It's a such a small parable, no? What he gave yeah. us here. Yeah. The shortest parable I can say. He says those who listen to his teaching, they are life. And when they apply, listen to the teachings, not only listening, but when they apply in their life, their life, their house is like built on the rock. And those who do not, those who listen, but do not apply, it's like sand. He said, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise like a person who builds on house on a rock. Now, now, many of you or many of us, even I've done this in the past, that we, we, we said we listen to oh my goodness. Yes. No. Praise God. Somebody praise has, God. praise God, somebody True. has. True. Yeah. True. Praise Jesus. Everything is good. So... Many, uh, many of us uh, uh, in the past, uh, I'm sure everybody has experienced it, listening to the teachings for 16 hours, 18 hours. Uh, but when the problem comes, what are we doing? Are we opening our mouth and speaking the problem all the time or applying the truth what you have heard for 16 to 18 hours at the time of your problem? Praise God. So yeah. this is, yeah, this is, this is, we are building the solid foundation. This is what I'm going to tell you all today. If I have to give you an illustration in the natural world. Now, this is what Jesus spoke in parable. But in the natural world, if I have to give like two brothers building their houses in the same plot given to them by their father. Plot is the same. Now, both the brothers are hiring a same contractor. Again, the contractor is same. Okay. Houses are identical. And they are built by one contractor. It's not given to some other contractor, but the same contractor. Now, both of them, the, when the houses are finished, they take the position, they live in those houses and uh, they live there with their family. Everything seems to be good. Now, when the rain comes, now, brother A, 
his house is perfect, strong, nothing leaking, no issues at all, is happy. But the brother B, his house is having leakage, walls are cracked, walls are, walls are having dampness and a lot of issues everywhere. Now, how can it be possible, same land, same contractor, everything is identical, but one is having the, one out, uh, the brother A's house is perfect, nothing is wrong, but, but brother B's house is, some problems are there. Okay, now we know that both the houses are built by one guy, not a different guy. Now what happens during the building of any building or any construction work? Some people do take interest, right? They take interest to go visit the site, visit the construction place, and they get involved with the contractor, right? Yeah. They go, anybody has experience building their houses, or for example, even if you're renovating your own house, you get in, some people get involved. Some people just don't bother about it. Yeah, right. Let him do, we have given the contract, let us not in that mindset you have, right? Yeah. So the brother A, what he does, he goes during the construction of the house. He goes, he gets, a, he, he builds his relationship with the contractor. And whenever he wants something not according to his plan, he got it corrected, made sure the house was built uh, in a right manner. Everything, the, whatever the material is, uh, has been used, he makes sure that the material used in a proper proportion, everything, he takes care of it. But the brother B, it doesn't bother. He says, okay, contract is given to somebody. He will take care of it. I don't have to worry. I don't have to get involved. That is his job. Correct? This is, this yeah. is the word. It is his job. I've given him. Let him finish. And when he's finishing, he goes and lives. But meanwhile, this contractor has cheated him in the okay. material. Right? Mm -hmm. he, has used, he has used cheap material. He has used cheap... Uh, uh you know concrete whatever the work is done it is just done to look alike but inside it is hollow correct so right. this is how we get cheated now this uh, now if you look at it with this uh, example did these two brothers hire the same contractor yes. yes so what was the problem with the brother b he was lazy yeah bother to go and visit his site or his house while it was under construction right. and that's the reason his house turns to be weak and the problem starts showing up during the monsoon every mm -hmm. problem comes during the monsoon right yeah right even if you're living in a flat the problem shows up during the monsoon some mm -hmm. kind of leakage is there praise god but now what Jesus is saying here, I'm going to connect you with the scripture now. Anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it wise, like the person who builds a house on the solid rock. Now, what is this solid rock? The solid rock is Jesus. The yeah. word of God. Yeah, we'll come to the, again, we'll, to, we'll show, to show you the solid rock in the natural world. You know, when a builder, when we see the size, uh, skyscraping buildings, right? Huge yeah. buildings. In Bombay, we have, right, sister? Huge yeah. building we see now. Yeah. 60, yeah. 80 story buildings also we see. Now, these buildings are not built just like that. They, when they dig, when they excavate uh, for the foundation, they make sure they touch this, this uh, bedrock. There is a bedrock, okay? Yeah, right. It's a bedrock. It has to touch that. Once they touch that bedrock, now they when they found uh, the bedrock, they will start putting up the foundation and with uh, and whatever the material to be used for, you know, proper concrete they will put. Now they are sure that now we can lay the foundation and bring the building up. But can you see that foundation when the building comes on the ground level? Right How down. Yeah. No. No. You Nobody only can see. No. Only once it comes up, then you can see it. Correct. We, we can see only the building, but how deep they have excavated or dug deep, whether they have found the bedrock. Can anyone see that foundation, no. which is no. solid foundation? No. Nobody can see. 
you know, even when this building comes up, it will never shake. It will be so strong, even in storm, wind, torrents, whatever it is. Why? Because of the foundation. Yeah, right. This is, this is those who listen to the teachings and obey. Yeah. Okay, listens to the teachings, obey what Jesus has said. And even when the flood waters rise, the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because mm. it is built on the bedrock, that solid foundation. Praise God. Praise God. So that is what Jesus is telling. Now, can we build that? Now, Jesus is again saying, but anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rain and floods come, the wind beat against that house and it will collapse. Okay, with a mighty crash. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, do we build houses on the sand? It is actually not oh. that meaning. This meaning is with all the worries and tensions and everything. Praise God. Correct. <laughs> now, Sister Sharada went for the discipleship retreat, right? Yeah. She met so many people over there. She spoke about Priscilla. Priscilla has wonderful testimonies there. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you all go on the YouTube, you will find a good testimony of uh, Priscilla, how she has overcome everything in her life. Now, she met good people over there. Same mindset, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, when she had problems on uh, coming back, she had a lot of problems. Oh, yeah. Going back, did her foundation shake? No. What she received? No. No. She went there. Before that, also people tried to, uh, you know, shake her foundation, but she still went. She uh, understood many truths. She learned how to speak in tongues. Before she used to say only hallelujah, she's always, and I told her that I had messaged her uh, during the discipleship retreat when she messaged me and said, if anybody has, uh, you know, uh, activated her tongues, uh, she said, it's happening. And she was so confident it was happening there because she was in the retreat center and she knew that what she, the, what the Holy Spirit will do with her. Even those things which she did not know, he, you know, brought it into light in her life. So during her journey, when she was going back, because of, uh, she had that foundation, she overcame every problem. It's mm -hmm. not, a, Jesus is not telling us about the house built on the sand. We see, we, we do see the sh shacks in Goa near the, <laughs> near, <laughs> near yeah. the beaches, right? Yeah. They do collapse. They do collapse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they do collapse because they don't have the foundation. This is an example I'm just giving you in the natural world. But Jesus is not talking about the, what we are thinking actually. Jesus is talking about the faith. Jesus is, has given us this parable to know that he was teaching us, uh, to, uh, you know, the Bible is for our correction. Yeah. I, I want to reiterate on this and remind all, every one of you, Bible is not for argument. Please don't take the Bible and debate on it. If somebody is debating on the Bible, just stop it there and then. Okay, Bible is only meant for a correction. What is written in the Bible is for us to use in our daily life, right? Yes. This parable is more related to our day-to-day -day living style. Day-to-day -day living style. Because when we, you know, two people can go to the same uh, discipleship retreat, one can spend five days just saying that, wow, wow, I'm away from my home. <laughs> Correct? Yeah. One can sit there and receive every word in the spirit. Mm. Now, the person who has received the word in the spirit will try to go home and practice it. Yeah. The person who has received the word there and who has just been happy because the person is out of the house and out of the people around them, for five days and gone back, that person will not be the same person just the way the other person has received this in the spirit. The person will still have the problems in their life and they don't know how to overcome them. Yes, right. Correct? Right. 
praise God. So now coming to the understanding of this parable, okay, uh, in uh, sister take um, take us to Romans chapter twelve verse three. Romans twelve three. Yeah. Just a minute. Sister Gracie? Yeah, for I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who's among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So God has God is dealing with each one of us with a measure of faith. Hmm. For, the Bible says, For I say through the grace given to me. Is grace given to everyone? Yeah, oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. Everybody has the grace to yeah. everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. So if the grace is overflowing in your life, I'm not supposed to think too much about myself. I'm not that's why I said every day when you operate in faith, operate in raw faith. So when we think too much about ourselves when we know that I know everything, what are we doing? We are losing that grace. <laughs> the grace is not multiplying, right? Yeah. There are there are people sometimes when we tell them to listen to the teachings, I have heard this teaching. How many times to listen? Yeah, right. Huh? You have heard the teaching, but how many times you are falling every day? Mm. So we have to think soberly Say every day, if you think that every day is a new day, then go and think even every day your faith has to increase and your every day your faith is increasing. It is multiplying. Your, your grace is multiplying. Pray for that. So because God is dealing with each one with the measure of faith. God will not deal with me with the faith that Leonie has nor God will not deal with the uh, Gracie with the faith that I have. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. So your husband did not want to take the medicine. He did not. He saw you not taking medicine and he wanted to deal with his faith. Yeah. If you can do it, he can also do it. Yeah. God has given the, you know, he has given everyone a measure of faith but this faith and this grace will increase and multiply when you operate every moment just being God dependent so what we are learning in the in the during the uh, you know when we listen to the teachings or we are attending any Bible class we are supposed to apply that in our life make corrections Yes. And when the storm comes in our life, we can listen to many teachings, pray all the time, go and teach others. But when the real storm comes, what happens? Our own life, own life. What words do you have in your mouth? Mm. Correct? Yeah, right. You need, you, yeah, you need a support. You need, you need a partner sometimes. Like I always say, if you have a problem, catch somebody, go and speak in tongues for 30 minutes every day. The problem will go off, but don't say that. Okay, don't you know? Don't uh, depend on your own strength. It's the Holy Spirit because the Bible says that that you know when you pray in tongues in two, you need two people. Otherwise, you have Holy Spirit. But when you have two people, it is always it's always powerful. Yes. So don't wait. If you are in any kind of situation, be humble. Be sober. Think soberly. Get out of that comfort zone. No, I will sit in my home and I will pray. No. Let your faith foundation be strong. Now, and when you keep doing this, you will see how strong the foundation your, of your faith be. Because now you will see every time result, every time you do anything, 
results are 100 percent guaranteed yeah. but we are in the world we are in the flesh but it will waver that is the time you have to rise and find somebody. No, I'm not going to give up. I am going to pray with this person. Praise God. Praise so, God. so most of the time when the storm comes, many people speak what is happening right in front of their eyes. Yeah, praise God. And then what will happen? The storm will hit you. <laughs> Correct? Mm. Storm will hit that home, that that. Your home is your 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 you yourself. I'm not talking about the four side of a, a home built with the four walls. I'm talking about you as a church. You as a church. You are the church. You are your home is your body, your spirit, everything that is in you. It will hit you. You will get offended. Mm. Correct. Yes. So. What Jesus says, uh, what the Bible says, when you when you when you have any problem, take us to Romans chapter ten, verses eight to thirteen. Just a minute, sister. Ten, eight to take thirteen. Take NLT this time. NLT, okay. Yeah. Eight to thirteen, you said, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Read. In fact, it says the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you openly declare that Jesus that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are same in this respect and they have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For praise every yeah. yeah, praise Jesus. Now, where is the word? Where is the message? It's, yeah. it's in your hand, it's in your yeah. lips, it's in your heart. If you have it in your heart only, it will come in your lips. Yeah. <laughs> so Paul says, Where is the message? Where is the word? Where is the message? When you hear the word. It is the message given to you by the preacher. When somebody is preaching to you, are you receiving that message in your heart, in your mind or in your spirit? Yes. So the one who receives in the spirit, there the faith multiplies. The faith of Christ is in everyone, every person, correct? Yeah. But we have to receive the message in our spirit. That's very important. Message is not somewhere else. It has to go deep in your spirit. Mm. And the Bible says if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yes. Okay, the problem is here when everybody says, okay, this is what is pre it is written there. I believe in God. I believe everything. It is written, but it has to be received in your heart. It has to be believed in your heart. If you're believing it in your heart, you're made right with God, righteous. Making right with God is your right standing with God. Yeah. Praise God. Praise so God. Now, now right standing is given to everyone, those who believe in Jesus, because the, you know, uh, whether it is Jew, whether he is a Gentile, you and I are Gentiles, right? Yes. We are not coming from Jerusalem. We no. are in Jerusalem now. Because, 
because we are born again. Yeah. We did not come from Jerusalem, but now we are already in Jerusalem. We don't have to go to, go to Jerusalem. Yes. Because of Christ in us. Mm -hmm. So the promises are very clear. They are saying we have to trust in God and we will never be disgraced. Whether you are Jew, whether you are a Gentile, Jesus is the same for all. So yes. his power is same for all. It is not super, super for the preacher, to the pastor or a priest or to Sister Leonie or to somebody. It is the same power. Yes. But his power depends on the level of your faith. Yes. The measure of your faith. You are understanding here. Yeah. Okay. So he is gracious. Is he accepts everything that you speak, but what is the measure? Are you speaking the promise now and after two minutes you're speaking the facts? You know, those who are the people built their house on the sand? Both those who are building on the sand and uh, building on the rock they are, they are all people who, are, who have ardent their hearts. Yeah. Now, people who have ardent their hearts to the physical world, they build their house on the sand. On the, uh, on the sand, sand, physically sand. What do you see? No, harden. Hardening is you see, but you don't believe. Okay, okay. Hardening is. You see, but you don't believe. That is hardening. That is what Jesus was doing. Mm. He was seeing everything. Those who, those, see, both are building, uh, those are uh, hardening their heart. Those who harden their heart to the physical world, they build their house on the rock. Okay? Mm. Yeah. Okay. People who harden their heart to the spiritual world, they build their house on the sand. Is that mm -hmm. clear? Okay, okay. So Jesus had hardened his heart to the spiritual, uh, to the spir uh, to the physical, physical world. world, and he was only focused on his father. Yeah. Okay. So whenever he did the miracles, what he said in John eight thirty eight, I speak what I have seen with my father. Take it, uh, take a step, sister. John's eight thirty eight. John eight thirty eight. Yeah. 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 I am telling you the I am telling you what I saw when I was with my father, but you are following the advice of your father. Now, he saw what he saw when he's doing or what he's speaking is everything what he saw when he was with the father. That is the father of God. Yeah. And you're doing, we, the we means he's talking about other people uh, who are in the world. I'm talking about the people who are in the world, not in the world. They are doing everything what they are seeing. Their father, who is their father? Father of life. Hmm. The world teaches everything to see with our eyes here with the ears, with all the five senses and believe, correct? Yes. And Jesus was able to do everything what his father was doing in heaven because he was living the same life as he lived in heaven. Because when you harden your heart to the physical world, what is happening before your eyes and you remain in the Lord, you will be able to see the results. Yeah. So our focus should not shift. Many times when we see the things, our focus shifts. Yes, some, sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, yes, yeah, sister. Because when we see, see the Satan comes only with the lies. He can only speak against you, right? Words. Yeah. So the people normally they give up when they hear the words. They want to give back. Mm -hmm. See, when Jesus, now, if, if I take, uh, uh, because I love to talk about what Jesus was doing. 
and I'm also practicing. And I am falling, but I rise up and again I say sorry and I practice again. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when Jesus multiplied the loaves and uh, of bread and fish, did he speak? What will I do now? So many no. people. What did he, he did not speak anything? What he saw. Yeah. When the when the when the disciples said we have a uh, year five loaves and uh, of bread and fish, what Jesus said to them, bring them to me. Yeah. Whatever you have, bring here to me. Mm -hmm. And he, what he did the next was he said, everybody sit down, relax, mm -hmm. relax, be at peace. Now people must be thinking. He is having forget the people, the disciples who are always with him, right? Mm -hmm. people are poor thing whatever he tells he will do they will do yeah. <laughs> look at the disciples <laughs> this guys we think mm -hmm. what is man is <laughs> taking five loaves of bread and two fish mm -hmm. and the crowd is so huge yeah <laughs> imagine because they were in the flesh all the time but what he did he just thanked to the father god taking them, looking up into heaven. And he broke the loaves. And everything multiplied. And there was no lack. He showed how we can turn lack into abundance. Yeah. Yes, Jesus is the abundance. The reason he was showing that each one of us can do it just by giving praises and glorifying the Lord. Yeah. He didn't say big prayer. Did he say big prayer there? Oh, no, no. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. He thanked the Father. You can do that in heaven and now I am doing it here because I'm your son. Because I'm coming from there. You are also coming from there, only I'm also coming from there. Uh, so we all can do. But what we do, the moment we see the lack, we speak that lack. Yeah. Thanks, God. What will I pay tomorrow? How will I pay my rent? How will I pay the fees? I was listening to, um, I think this was UK teachings. Um, I think so, UK. Or Ireland, there was one girl, a lady gave a testimony the other day, and she was talking about how uh, tough their uh, her childhood when her father when uh, she lost her father. Then uh, I don't know whether she was born brought up in the UK, but I think uh, her mother had a lot of problems. But her mother, they are Roman Catholic. Ireland, sister. Ireland. Yeah. Okay. So she, they, they, there was uh, those who did not hear. Uh, Sister Pamela, you heard this testimony of us. It was yes, such an amazing, hundred yeah, percent dependent. Yes. Her yes. mother was hundred percent God dependent, and she says that though they were Roman Catholics, they were also reading the Bible. They were, uh, you know, speaking those scriptures, and they saw that there was no lack. Even when there was no food or when there was no money, even some pastors came and said that if you form, come and join our church, you, you will have everything. We will give you this, 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 this. But she did not, uh, her mother never made a choice to go and join them. But she said, my God shall supply. She said, Father, this is your home. This is your house. And you will supply all our needs. And everything was there. She saying the her mother was 100% God dependent. And today I have learned that how to be 100% God dependent. You know, crucifying the flesh is not so easy. Knowing Jesus is easy, but walking with him is very difficult. Yes. Do you all agree with me? Yes. 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 It's very, very difficult. Because the moment we get little symptoms, some signs in our body, we are finished. Are just now I prayed in tongues. How come this came to me? Correct? Yeah. Uh, because when you pray in tongues only, it will come. Exactly. That is your test. When you were praying in tongues, you were preparing. Now the test came. What is your response? Jesus is, you know, in the Bible, if you look at it, 
Jesus is teaching each one of us how to speak exactly what he spoke and receive it in abundance. You, you know, even when we see that uh, Jesus' mother, Mother Mary came and told him about the lack of wine at Cana wedding. What Jesus said to her? He said, my, woman, that yeah, my time your, is not yet. Yeah, does, uh, he says first, this, does your concern have to do with me? Yeah. What am I supposed to do? That means, what am I supposed to do if there is no wine? My hour has not yet come, he says. Mm. So, what is mother? See, here we need to understand. He says this to her, but what was her response to the servants? She mm. said, whatever he says to you, mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. So, did she have a faith in her son? Or did she say, Are Baba, I told you to do something. Can't you understand they don't have wine? <laughs> That is what we speak, right? Yeah. <laughs> Can't you understand when I'm telling you to do something? Why don't you do it? They are, they are running out of wine. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't say anything. Whatever he says, you do it. So yeah. what when he when she said this, he had compassion over her. Yeah. He had such a why he had compassion? Because first he says, What is your problem now? That's what he said. Oh, what yeah. is the concern have to do with me? My hour has not come. How am I supposed? But what he what he liked is what she said that whatever he says to you, do it. This part we miss. Then we become very happy, turn water into wine. So whatever he says to you, do it. When he heard this, did he hear when she said that? Yes. She heard, he heard. That is the time his heart felt with compassion over his mother. And he said, How he, he just he just uh, you know experienced that the faith that his own mother had in him. Because that means she had she knows she knows that what her son can do. Mm -hmm. She's full of grace, right? Yeah. And who is the grace? Grace is Jesus. She's yeah. the one who gave birth. But what about you, about the apostles? Did apostles lived, dined, and journeyed with Jesus all the time? Yeah, but then they were still in the flesh. Yeah. <laughs> all that they wanted them, Jesus to take care of them. They were happy. Yeah. They were getting free food. They didn't, they didn't work hard for anything, correct? Yeah, right. They didn't keep anything in their heart what Jesus was doing. Mm. We are also like that. Many yeah. Times. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we get like everything. That. We get everything, but we do not keep anything in our heart what he has done for us. Mm. We are same like his disciples, his, his apostles. When everything is good with us, we are very happy. Wow, yeah. God is with us. Praise God. That's what they did. When everything was good with them, they were very happy. Mm -hmm. But when the storm hit, what they said? We are perishing. <laughs> you do not care for us. <laughs> God, I did so, so much thing for you. I went and helped somebody. Where are you now? Correct? Yeah. <laughs> even when they, you know, even when they had lack of, you know, when they uh, there was no food, like uh, 5,000 plus uh, people were there, they were looking at money, correct? They said, we have so much money. Yeah. They said some dinari they have. And they complained. Even when they saw those five loaves, you know, as I said, the crowd was so much, they were thinking whether it is sufficient. Even when, the, when they were sinking in the boat, they complained. Praise God. Thank you. But see, uh, in, uh, Sister, take us to this, uh, uh, Jesus calms the storm, Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41, because we, here we learn something. 
सिस्टर मार्क फोर थर्टी फाइव टू फोर्टी वन जस्ट अ मिनट Mr. Gracie, yeah, I can't see. Yeah, yeah, from wherever I came, there only thirty-five. No, I cannot see the content. So you have to go down, uh, Sister Leoni. You Roll can't down. see. No, mm. even I can't, can't see. You all can't see. No. no. Scroll down. But it is there on my screen. I can see it. But you need to scroll down. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, uh, there is a pause come on my screen. One minute. Uh, hold on. How to remove it out? There is some pause showing on my screen. Really? Yeah. One, one minute. Hold on, hold on. I'll go back. Just a minute. Some pause came. I don't know from where did that pause come. Now you all can see? Yeah. Because I can see. Was, yeah, it was showing some. It was showing some pause. I don't know how did that pause come. Yeah, that is right. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciple, "Let's cross to the other side of the lake." So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowd behind. Although other boats followed, but soon as a fierce storm came up, high waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciple woke him up, shouting, "Teacher, don't you care that we are going to drown?" When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, "Silence, be still." Suddenly, the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, "Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith?" The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? they asked each other even the wind and the waves obey him praise god so yes, when when the wind blew jesus was also with them the disciples were also with them but did they realize anything at that time did they realize anything that we need to be at rest just the way jesus is resting Yeah, no, they did not realize. Why? Because their hearts, their hearts were hardened. Hmm. Their hearts were hardened to the spiritual world. They were still speaking fear, anxiety, and lack all the time. When Jesus says that, "Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith?" what jesus told them when they saw the fig tree jesus says there mark 11:22 have faith in god yeah. Yeah. have faith in god and these all the miracles they have seen they have seen the fish multiplied loaves uh, of bread multiplied they they saw jesus was feeding the uh, you know uh, multitude everything they saw but they were all in flesh Mm. and they saw how jesus was fully god dependent all the time but they couldn't even understand what he was speaking when they faced a problem in the boat they just forgot everything now they are afraid of their lives this man is resting and he is going to drown us drown us <laughs> He will, he will, he will come out, and but we will be dead. Yeah, <laughs> they had that thought. See the thought, and they open their mouth. Without the thought, you will not open your mouth. Mm. Everyone, keep in mind your thoughts are very important. 
the mm -hmm. thoughts will first flow in your mind the thought process will start then you will speak mm -hmm. so don't speak when the thoughts are coming say these are not my thoughts god's thoughts are my thoughts immediately and those thoughts will vanish i'm telling you it is vanishing and i'm doing it i will teach what i am doing very openly i'll tell you so that you will see the victory thanks lord few times you will fall but come back yeah if if uh, while uh, if you are taking a part in any uh, running race if you fall down you will not sit you will still rise up and yeah. run yeah if you are an athlete so the the disciples had ardent their heart so that's why many of you may know the scriptures by heart many of you know the bible the from the first page to the last page from the genesis to the revelation many of you may know uh, or be in the word or uh, be the a uh, born again person for 20 years 15 years doesn't matter but when the situation comes bring the word which is in your heart speak it out if you don't have any scriptures say lord's prayer 10 times what he taught us because what happens in this lord's prayer first we glorify the father god have you noticed that our father who is in heaven yeah. holy be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven how is this kingdom in heaven is kingdom in heaven without any pain correct uh, so you have to bring that kingdom in your life so you are glorifying the lord first and the second part is all about you give us this day our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from every evil from the unseen right yeah evil exists so the first part when we say yeah, i i'll tell you uh, very honestly i will tell you i want to share with you all today uh, during the covid i was going to work when there was lockdown in kuwait okay 3 months there was lockdown and i had to i was called and i was going every day and uh, when the covid comes it eats everybody you know those were yeah. in the ward so those yeah. were not in the ward also but it mm. is up to you how you come out of it mm. correct yeah. so uh, i was uh, you know i was not uh, what to say like you know for me to say the scriptures all the time i was getting bored very honestly speaking i was getting bored now what i did in the bus i was prompted by the holy spirit holy spirit actually told me say lord's prayer okay from my workplace uh, my home to the workplace it is 30 to 40 minutes okay and i was going by transport i used to sit in the transport the moment i used to get into the transport i used to this prayer what jesus taught us continuously and it was so amazing every day other time in the office i would say something else the scriptures like you know as i walk but for that 40 minutes i used to say our father who is in heaven give holy be your name your kingdom come and this prayer of mine gave me the total and complete protection not only to me see i uh, myself uh, my husband and i were going to work my children were at home mm. and my older one used to go for a pa parties and everywhere she used to mix she was not bothered whether the covid will hit her or not initially we were a little bit upset but when we got into the word we, when we came to know we were not upset but we always you know said the prayers uh, we spoke the scriptures we just relied on god and even when i got the fever uh, when i came from work when i my husband said that i'm uh, my body is um, warm and uh, you are having temperature i took it light and i did the prayer and i moved with my work okay so it did not hit us it did not touch us so this is the storm now when uh, like in in uh, bombay sister uh, 
uh, Sister Leonie is from Bombay, Sister Gracie is from Bombay, and those who are from Bombay, you know that when the when the rain comes at sometimes it is so heavy, so heavy, all the uh, railway line shuts down, right? Yeah. Do you stop going to work next day? <laughs> yeah, we, if the traveling is you can't travel, then you have you don't go. If there but, is no but you don't you, you have not, to go yeah but one thing i know I, I have worked in bombay even if the trains have stopped i've still gone to the station yeah even i because we don't have that fear that today the trains will not work correct, correct? yes because we know the life in bombay nobody can stop so even in our life it today if the storm has hit you have to know that there is, you have to be God dependent because God is there. If you're in the word, that word will always be there for you. But only thing that if you know the promise of God to the, to the, to the right situation, if you don't know the promise, if you are not able to recall anything, just say that Jesus, what he taught us, that first part of it. Keep saying 15, 20 times if you want to say, keep saying. Praise God. Yes. So, so how do we know a person as hardened heart to the kingdom of God, to the spiritual world? How do we know? How you can make out? He doesn't listen to what you say at all. Yeah, there are four indications how you can make out this person is not, uh, this person has hardened heart to the spiritual world, to the kingdom of God. They don't see, they don't see Okay, because they cannot see the unseen. Yeah. They're only believing in believe in seeing with their five senses. Yeah. So, so they can't see the unseen. Second, they do not hear. Mm. Their ears are deaf. When you speak the word, their ears are deaf. Mm. Third is they don't understand. Mm. See, there is end of favor, uh, uh, end of God, favor of God upon them, but still they do not understand the love of God for them. Yeah. Okay. The fourth, they do not remember whatever you have spoken to them about the word. Oh, praise God. You understand here? Yes, sister. Whatever you speak about the kingdom, they forget in a moment. They go back to the same natural world, to the physical world, to experience everything through the physical senses, the five senses. Oh. These are the four indications that every person who has ardent art to the kingdom of God. So how can you bring these people to you have to be uh, consistent to uh, remain in the word teaching. I feel that because then only, you know, this hardened heart will be uh, melted. I mean, because we have to know every one teaching. I know how much uh, for me to come into the word. One teaching, the faith came after listening to listen, listening, continuously listening, listening, listening. Then I came to the word that, uh, that me, uh, the word of God, like, you know, that it was in the starting, it was very difficult. Yeah, Sister Gracie, what you said is right. That is like, you know, we already knew. But now there are some people who, what Sister Jasna said, all these things I have seen present. So how to bring these people close? Yes. That, that now, yeah, to bring the family members also, you can say that there are many, my own family members, they are not uh, so much like how we are, how I am into it. Like. Yeah, now we are here, we can't do anything with our uh, strength, right? Yeah, you can't do. You need Holy but Spirit. But the Holy Spirit works yeah. through you. Now, the Holy Spirit, if the if your foundation of faith is strong on the bedrock, then when you speak your faith with other person, it works. But if you go with your psychology... Mm. If you go with your psychology, there are people who are in the psychology, right? They, are, mm. they have done the master's in psychology, right? Yes. If they think that I can do this with this person like this, like this, like this, they will fail. 
But if you go with the strength of the Holy Spirit, you can convict through the Holy Spirit. Okay, I'm not talking about convincing, conviction. Okay, conviction is important. Yeah. With the convict, they get convicted by the Holy Spirit in a moment. You don't have to work hard here. Now, when you speak, there is power in your word. And that word goes directly deep into their heart. Now, always uh, you need to understand when you go and preach the word, the word has to touch the spirit of the other person. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm giving a testimony, the, from that testimony, other person has to come back with another testimony. Yes. Correct? Yes. The faith builds in the testimony. Yes. Now, Sister Sharada was, she did everything. Now, somebody may say, oh, she went for the discipleship retreat and why, how come she had so many problems? Mm. That was a test. Yeah, that was a test. So many people do not understand this. Mm. But do we, you know, people love to give back, no? Yeah. <laughs> huh? Praise God. <laughs> like this. <laughs> So it is it is not that you know it's not that easy. I'm going to teach you in the next class mm. when the situation arises. Mm. Yeah, we, we need to we need to understand when this kind of situation arises, how you need to zip your lips for the world. Huh? I'm not talking about the word. Word you speak to the world, you need to be a dead dog. You understand here? Yeah. To the world, be a dead dog. Now, see, I'll tell you, Satan wants you to speak. Mm. But you, you are in the world. Now, you have to recall everything what you have learned. What Jesus has spoken to you through the word. Jesus said, don't give eye for eye, tooth for tooth. Please, Simple. So you keep your mouth shut. Now, oh, you can't. You don't open your mouth and say, Jesus said, no, uh, uh, don't give eye for eye, tooth for tooth. Don't open your mouth and say, just be quiet. Now you're standing on the truth. The truth is telling you, don't open your mouth. Correct? Mm. For me, what I do, I speak in tongues in my mind. Now, people will say, how can you speak in tongues in your mind? No, you can speak. You're speaking in spirit. Yeah. Praying in spirit. And you will see the result. I'll uh, speak on this uh, in the next class, okay? Yeah. Yes, yes. God. Yes. Anybody has any questions until here, please? No. You can. This this topic for the next time, yeah, it is a good one because you know, see, I have experienced sister two sets of people. Okay, one is where I have spoken the word and that person has responded back. The next side is what you are trying to tell now for the next teaching. I want to know that because there is the thing where I am falling down. Praise God. <laughs> Yeah, one, I, yeah. One side I have experience. I got I have got the feedback from one side. Now the mm -hmm. other side I am falling down. Praise God. Because uh, I I uh, passed the test. Praise what I'm going to tell you next time. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. I have to teach my students only after passing the test, correct? Yeah, I cannot, right. Before the promotion, I will I speak. Yes, yes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Very nice. Praise God. So, so wind, wind is blowing every day, but I am seeing that wind is going in other direction. Very good. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Yeah, praise God. So that is the time Holy Spirit is telling me. When the before the rain comes, before he waters the seed, and you see the plant growing and producing its fruit, they'll be thundering. First, there will be dark clouds, dark mm. clouds, 
where you cannot see anything it is everything is dark mm -hmm. then the then comes lightning with the lightning follows thundering correct mm -hmm. that is what he told me so be still i am the god mm -hmm. <laughs> i am your father mm -hmm. keep smiling mm -hmm. so it works praise god praise god sister thank you jesus thank you jesus praise god did you all learn anything yes yes praise god <laughs> I Holy Spirit also knows uh, properly. He reads the mind very clearly. He, you know, you you stopped here. Actually, this is what I was looking out for. Where you stop, so I mm. get the answer. I'll get the answer now in the next session. <laughs> Praise God! Now you have to ponder on what you have learned mm. today. Now, yeah. when you ponder on it. many things many doors will open in your life mm. because see i uh, this is what i was doing when now also when i listen to the teachings no i take something from there and i keep on thinking about it yeah how it works why it works i have mm -hmm. questions i ask the questions and then after 2 3 days i get answer mm -hmm. so that means that word what i took is now turning into flesh and the mm. blood of christ yeah mm. you got it yes so, yes so all of you remain <laughs> remain in the word what you have learned today remain in that word mm. why my faith is shaking why i don't have that strong foundation why my house seems to be built on the sand at times yeah right if god has given everyone the grace and everybody has the uh, a different measure of faith so what is the measure of my faith is it increasing or it is decreasing is i am increasing or my the, the you know whether i am increasing or my faith is increasing because you should not increase in your life yeah right you have to decrease mm -hmm. christ has to increase yeah right so increase the uh, you know christ in you not by saying thank you jesus praise you jesus all the time you don't increase by that way your relationship i am not even telling you go and sit and pray for all the time that is your relationship with the god so you are you all the time responding to him correct mm. the trials are coming are you responding to him or are you are reacting to that so these two things you need to understand yes, and uh, i will have lot of testimonies in the next week yes. with all the corrections made by you all <laughs> yes <laughs> wonderful praise jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus and stop worrying every one of you stop worrying go to sleep in peace rest in the lord god takes care of everything he takes care of everything don't worry this this so i have learned i have learned this long ago that don't worry at all so now anything happens you know sister i am just cool i said jesus you are there you are taking care of everything and i just remain cool and i see that it works and then i keep telling the others also but they are still growing up no so they take little time to understand praise jesus hmm. okay now i think we can close with thanksgiving prayer i will just make the prayer thank you father thank you holy spirit thank you lord jesus christ for this wonderful time that you gave me to share with the the word with my brothers and sisters thank you father today we have learned how to receive the word lay the foundation the foundation of faith thank you jesus every day there is storm every day there is torrent in our life but jesus you said 
that when we hear your word, when we hear the word that you have preached and obey and follow what is preached by you to us, our houses will be built on the rock, solid foundation. And we want to have this foundation all the time. Holy Spirit, we pray to you that whatever we have learned today that we apply in our lives, that when we are in the storm, when the wind blows towards us, Holy Spirit, teach us to depend on you. We pray that, Father, that we be God-dependent all the time, just like, the, like Jesus was depending on you. Thank you, Father, that we are all coming from your kingdom into this world. Remind each one of us what you have told us in heaven before sending in this world. Bring everything to our remembrance through the Holy Spirit. What is our assignment? What is the purpose of, of our coming into this world? Through the Spirit alone, we can learn. We can understand. And we thank you, Father, for giving us this topic in our life today. How to build the foundation. For we cannot please you without faith in you. And we want that measure of faith to increase in our life. And we decrease in our life every day. Father, I thank you and I praise you that whoever is listening to these teachings on the YouTube, I pray that they be blessed. They receive in their spirit. And I pray that the spirit of God works in their life. Father, I make this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister.